our place uh, called Pertubuhan Kebajikan Tanggam Ilam. Uh, we are here in Panen Indah almost more than uh, 25 years. Uh, the founder is the late Mr. Selemutu and Madam Tanggama. Okay, at first, uh, 25 years back, they have started a babysitter place. Okay, uh, since my mother-in-law is a housewife, she started with a babysitting place. Uh, but end up, there is one family came here and left four uh, girls uh, from four years uh, until ten years girls. Uh, the four siblings was left here by the mother and the mother ran away. Uh, while my mother-in-law is taking care, then she had a thought, why don't she start with the orphanage home so that she can take care more kids who really need her help. So from there, it started to be a Tangga Milam. Okay, here, uh, since this is a welfare for children uh, place, we have uh, children from broken families, uh, children from the single mother or single father, we have kids from the abused cases. We also have uh, disability kids. We have uh, children who are fully of niche. They are all mixed up here. Uh, so we are taking care of um, kids and also elderly people called old folks. We have 30 kids and also uh, 8 old, uh, elderly people. We have four uh, special ability children here. Uh, one of the girl is uh, blind. She's blind and also have uh, some multi syndrome. She is a Down syndrome. Uh, she couldn't eat. She only can drink milk. Uh, she also cannot talk. Uh, she only knows inside this house. Once she go out from this house, she have to recognize things that have to walk. Uh, another two brothers, they are brothers, uh, they are lack in growth. They are very lack in growth because this is the effects from their childhood time where they, did, uh, they are not vaccinated properly and also they had uh, some fever which uh, make them to be like this nowadays. Uh, another boy we have is uh, one autism boy. Methods like uh, drop-in also have, also referred by the kebajikan side, by the government. Okay, this place fully uh, helping by these uh, kind heart people from the public. I haven't got any um, funds or any helps uh, from this uh, kebajikan side. Uh, since uh, five, uh, I have this permit only five years back but previously we are running as an NGO only. Only five years back we have the Kebajikan permit and now it's in, uh, ongoing. But still I haven't received any funds. Uh, hopefully I can get from the Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat as soon as possible. We have three workers here. But recently, I have sent my one of the foreign maid back to her hometown. Uh, and the main problem I'm having also is my lack of workers here. Uh, how I'm paying the helpers is by the public donations. The problem that we are really facing, a big problem for us right now is our transportation problem. We have uh, almost 25 uh, on uh, school going kids here. So when uh, during this MCO we doesn't feel the problem, but when school start again, uh, we will have this problem back because uh, we don't have a proper transport to take them all together to the schools. We have two different schools, and we have to take few trips to the for the kids to go to school early in the morning. Most of the kids here are in the morning session. So me and my husband will uh, face some issues in the morning to send them to school because we have to take them few trips uh, because we only having cars, uh, my car and my husband's car. Uh, we don't have uh, any 14-seater uh, uh, or 12-seater van. We don't have. Uh, hopefully, I can uh, get one uh, van 
so that all these kids can be taken together to the school. Okay, private trans uh, transporters, they, we already seek them. We have asked them how much is the payment for each child. Uh, even though we are from the charity home, <laughs> they still charge us a lot. Even the school is uh, very near to us, they, all, they will charge us around uh, RM100 per person, per kid. So I think it's uh, not reasonable and better for us to uh, struggle and send them to school so that I can use that money to buy the marketing things for the kids to eat. During this MCO and even without MCO, the people who are coming here to donate are getting lesser. Uh, maybe our place, because uh, last time uh, our place is visible to the public people by the highway, the big highway. But almost uh, more than five to eight years, uh, the highway is blocked. That means the people from the, high, the main place there couldn't see our place. You can say because of that, uh, the visitors are less to our place and the donations and the cash flow or the groceries, everything getting lesser. So we need more support to take care of this home. Apart from publicity, we really need uh, some good hard people, genuine people, to come forward and help the kids over here with the uh, moral support and also help them with, uh, with their routines, also can guide them with their homeworks. Uh, we really need some this kind of people. The laptop wise, almost one year, we struggled and then we got the Wi-Fi uh, sponsor, we got the laptop sponsored. So far, the online wise, I've already settled. After this, the school going to start. Hopefully, we can manage with the stationaries and school uniform for next year. Okay, medical wise, we don't have a team or private doctors coming here to check. Let's say there is an illness or basic uh, fever or anything, I will send them to the nearest clinic. My father-in-law, late Mr. Selemoto, is no more here. Uh, almost three years back, he already passed away. Uh, now only my mother-in-law is here, but she is resting. And she already passed the responsibility to his son, uh, which is my husband, Mr. Jaya Kumar, as a chairman here. And, uh, we are running this place uh, more than 13 years with the, my in-laws, guardians. Uh, since this is a, a family charity started 25 years back, they want us to run this, to maintain the place and help whichever, uh, whoever kids will really need our help. Hopefully, the public also can uh, support us to this together.